Hey folks, what I wanted to do in this video is to talk to you a little bit about the Endosync Plus and its settings and maybe go a little bit over the um, some of the menu items on the um, uh, instructions for use uh, of this device. Now, clearly every time I get a new device, I throw out the instructions manual right away. And to that extent, uh, this might be the case for the Endosync Plus, but it's a fairly sophisticated piece of instrumentation. So I certainly recommend that you read the owner's manual and be able to at least follow up, at the very least, with some of the maintenance requirements such as the oiling and the keeping clean and the sterilization. It's important to realize that the head is certainly autoclavable. So here the head can come off and it is autoclavable, but um, you do need to put some oil, about five drops of the endosync oil in there every time before uh, autoclaving and then let it set for about 10 minutes, uh, if you will, and clean also these all the joints here and there using a toothbrush uh, um, and then put it on for autoclaving. Um, the, the body can be cleaned with alcohol, about 70-80% uh, alcohol um, is uh, what's recommended for this. If you use Cavi Wipe or any of these other highly uh, caustic uh, iodine-based uh, chemicals, then you may end up getting the discoloration of the handpiece uh, here in the body. So anyway, uh, make sure you read the instructions manual. With that said, let's get in here and take a look at all the menu settings ourselves and figure out what we can do with this. Again, the EndoSync was originally launched a few years ago and then the EndoSync Plus, which as you can see is kind of identical in terms of the look of the handpiece, was um, a replacement for uh, this handpiece by adding the um, um, reverse OTR, which is the OTR motion in reverse that allows the handpiece to be used for all the reciprocating files as well as the ESR, which is endosequence reciprocating file. So the handpiece uh, turns on by just pressing the same power button that activates uh, uh, the um, the power. Uh, the head is actually uh, easily, you can turn that around depending on your, if you're right-handed and left-handed, and you can even change the settings inside the menus so that it could be um, predominantly right-handed or left-handed based on your uh, preference. So I usually like to either use it this way and, and, and trigger the power button with my index finger or move it slightly this way and then trigger the power button with my thumb finger. So and then that would be working out this way. So let's get into the menus and see uh, what we have here. As I've mentioned before, we have six menu settings here that uh, I've recommended to the manufacturer to put in as pre-programmed, but you can overwrite them and write whatever. Uh, you can input and mix and match many of the variables inside the handpiece for your best liking. And that really is the key thing with this handpiece. But let's go over memory one. Memory one is set for all the endo sequence line of files, the conventional endo sequence line of files, Endo sequence, endo sequence CM, ESX, and uh, endo sequence uh, scouts, um, and so on and so forth. Uh, the control flex, uh, razor flex, all of those files. Um, and that's about an RPM of 500 RPM uh, for rotation wise and a torque of 0.6 Newton centimeter, and it's an OTR motion. We'll get into that in a little bit more detail. Memory two is also set for all the endo sequence line, which is 500 RPM. Uh, with OTR, but the OTR setting for forward motion is set at 0.2 newton centimeter. What that means is that the OTR is going to trigger very quickly as soon as it encounters torque. Why is that? Well, don't forget, this is for forward rotation motion. What you can do in this way, by having the OTR limit set very low, you can turn your forward rotating files into a forward reciprocating set of files. And that is really an interesting and really a new a model to add to your instrumentation line, no matter what files you have. It could actually be your endo sequence files or it could be any of the other files. Uh, you're able now to trigger the OTR at a very low torque setting and therefore have rotation and then very quickly turn into a OTR setting, which is forward and reverse direction, the forward cutting and a reverse relief action for uh, no matter file, uh, system that you're using. So that is that. And then the, for memory three now, as you notice from memory one and memory two, we had a clockwise rotation uh, for the first two. So those are for conventional files. And memory three is set for all your reciprocating file, ESR, as well as the other reciprocating files. And that is so that you can see right below the M3, it says CCW standing for counterclockwise motion, or what I call reverse direction. So forward direction clockwise, reverse direction counterclockwise. And here now we have 500 RPM in counterclockwise direction with an OTR setting of 0.2 
um, Newton centimeter, which means that you have reverse rotation, and as soon as you hit the dentin wall and the torque limit is uh, set pretty low, it starts to kind of get into this OTR, which is similar to kind of reciprocation motion, which means that it has something to the order of 180 degrees in reverse direction, and then a, about 60 degrees in forward direction. So OTR sitting in the handpiece, as I did my testing to find out an optimal degree of rotation, was 180 degrees in a cutting direction and a 60 degree in a non-cutting direction, the relief action. So with forward OTR, it means you have 180 degrees forward or clockwise uh, cutting action. And as soon as the torque, if there is no torque, then the file is going to continue to rotate 360 degrees. But as soon as there is torque at 180 degrees, it's going to reverse back 60 degrees. So in a forward direction, it'll be 180 degrees forward and then 60 degrees counterclockwise. In the reverse direction, it'll be 180 degrees counterclockwise and about 60 degrees in a clockwise direction. And that is uh, the way uh, it allows you to have that kind of reciprocation or OTR motion in either forward or reverse direction depending on the file that you're using. And that's the key thing. So memory three is for reciprocating files and for files that cut in the counterclockwise direction, reverse direction. Now memory four has been set for the uh, XP3D settle files. That's about 1,000 RPM, one Newton centimeter. And this again is just if you're using those files that are operating at a very high RPM, which is 1,000 RPM here, this, the, the handpiece can go up to 1,000 RPM, and um, that's what you would be using it for. And then memory five is I set a 300 RPM at 0.2 Newton centimeter. This is in a clockwise direction. So what this means is that you have now, it's the same as the memory two setting, which was 500 RPM 0.2, except that obviously it's a lower RPM. So what does this mean? This means this memory five is probably the safest cutting setting for all your conventional files. You're operating at 300 RPM at 0.2 so that your file ends up getting into a reciprocation motion very quickly in this type of a situation. So uh, if you have a molar, if you have a difficult tooth, put it to memory five, and that'll give you 300 RPM, a 0.2 forward uh, OTR motion, and you're gonna be pretty safe at that level. Now memory six is kind of a buffer thing, and I just, we just said that let's leave it at 500 RPM with a high torque for those people that are um, don't want to use the OTR and they just want to use their hand in order to feel the, 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 uh, the torque setting of 500 RPM at one Newton centimeter is one setting. But this is probably the one that most people are going to end up buffering and using with their own setting. You may want to decide to put this one kind of like memory five, which is a 300 RPM at 0.2 centimeter for OTR put the memory six for the reverse direction. So 300 reverse direction with 0.2 and that'll give you the safest reciprocation motion in reverse for this handpiece. So that's pretty much it, the six memory settings, as I mentioned, uh, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna go inside each one and tell you how you can set the variables and what they all mean in each uh, particular setting. Now, we only have uh, a positive and a negative button here, which is to advance or go back in the memory settings, and then when you select a variable, you can increase or decrease it with the, with the positive and negative. The S stands for the select button, and then this the power button. So for the most part, uh, when the unit is on, you can press the, uh, the select button and hold for a few seconds, and now it falls into a sub-menu setting. You can see the first one is OTR, and here you have the option of going OTR, going counterclockwise direction, where you're gonna have this truck backing up sound, and uh, or go into a clockwise direction. So the difference between a clockwise direction and the OTR is that the clockwise direction is just a conventional clockwise direction. The counterclockwise direction is a conventional counterclockwise direction. But when you have OTR, you have that ability to go in either direction, forward or reverse, depending on which way you set the OTR, and then benefit from the OTR setting, which is the, the kind of a semi-reciprocation type of setting with whatever program you put in there. We'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Okay, so we press the select and hold, and then now we have the clockwise, counterclockwise. Let's put that back into the OTR. You press the select again, and you move on now to the direction of the OTR, and that's how you set the OTR. If you set it into OTR, then you have to decide whether you want clockwise 
or counterclockwise, which means that you're going to have forward OTR or reverse OTR. So we'll leave this at the forward OTR, which is clockwise. Now, the third setting here is the speed. Do we want to have 500 RPM or 800 or 1,000, 100, uh, 300? 500, 800, 1,000. So these are the, uh, the, the kind of settings that we have. We'll keep it back at 500, but you could choose what you want. And now the, uh, the limit of the OTR, which is a torque setting. We've set it for memory one at 0.6, but as you realize, we have five different memory settings for the OTR, or rather torque settings for the OTR. 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and 1.0. So the 1.0 means that you get the most amount of torque before it starts to kick, OTR starts to kick in. Um, 0.6 I found for, works pretty well, where, where it gives you an optimal amount of efficiency and uh, safety. Uh, if you're a little bit heavy handed and you want to have more kind of safety, then what you could do is you can actually set it lower. So the lower OTR setting will give you more safety, the higher OTR setting will give you more efficiency. And as I mentioned, I found that 0.6 is a good sweet spot for triangular files, but if you're heavy handed and you wanna be on the safe side, then go down either to 0.4 or to 0.2. Remember that the 0.2 is set on memory uh, two setting and as well as memory five setting on the handpiece as well for that reason. So we'll go back here to 0.6 and now we have the cutting angles of the OTR. Here as you can see for the uh, forward OTR the, the, cut, the cutting angle is the angle in the direction that it's cutting. If it's forward when, when it says 180 it's talking about 180 in the forward direction and uh, you can change that from 180 to 270 to 360 and 150 180. So that's the cutting uh, action, 150, 180, uh, 270, and 360. And then on the reverse, uh, you, you have a chance of going, uh, I have, we have it at you know, 60, you could go to 90, to 120, uh, 30, 60, 90, 120, and again 30. I, 60, I found that formula 180 to 60 to be a pretty good uh, balance of efficiency and safety. Now the next one is sync on, which means that the handpiece now is you could turn the sync on or off depending on whether you want to have the handpiece and the apex locator synced and that's the apex locator and the sync AI and so you turn this on here and then through this little cord here right there you're connecting the handpiece and the apex locator together, and now these two are synced. So the handpiece and the apex locator are gonna to work together to tell you uh, where you are in the canal. And that's uh, a key thing. The way I work with the handpieces, I always connect it to when I, I have it disconnected as I'm working towards the apical one third. As I get close to my estimated working length, then I begin to dry the chamber, connect these two and use the small file. I use the ESX 1502 oftentimes. Sometimes you may want to use a different one like a 1504 or uh, an endosequence scout file, either the 15 or the 17. And then once I have the length, I use my endo ring to measure the amount and then I disconnected it. And the reason for that is because of the next thing, which is the fact that beyond the sync on, the next thing is apical stop, the next thing on the menu. Apical stop means that when these two are connected, the apex locator and the handpiece are connected, the, uh, when working length is reached, the handpiece will automatically stop. And the reason why I put that on stop, because that's the options are to either have it go on to stop or have it go on to reverse, which means the file doesn't stop, it'll just reverse. The reason why I have it on to stop is so that the file can stop and then my assistant or I can set the stopper to the working length so that I can then remove the file and measure it. One thing you can do which I have done in the past with the regular EndoSync, is to have one of the memory settings on stop and then have the same identical settings on a separate memory setting, but with the apical reverse. And what that does is then it allows you to get the memory stop on the first setting, measure your working length, and then switch to the other setting where everything is exactly the same, but you're on memory, or you're on reverse, and this way as you get close to the apex, the file can reverse out. So uh, that's the other thing that you need to know, which is the reverse uh, setting. And then the next one here is automatic start and stop. What's nice about the EndoSync is that you're able to get a start and stop when the EndoSync is connected to the uh, EndoSync AI to the, to the Apex locator, it'll sense that you're inside the canal and it'll begin the rotation of that memory setting. And then when you remove the file from the canal, it automatically realizes it's no longer inside the canal and the file stops. And this way you no longer need to hit that button. That's a very nice 
little setting, uh, but as I mentioned, I don't like to have the apex locator connected to the endosync for the entire length of the procedure. And the main reason for that is that in order to have accurate readings, you always have to have a dry chamber that doesn't have a chance of potentially creating short circuits with any of the fillings or any of the connections that you may have from inside the chamber to the outside. And the best reading of the apex locator is done when the chamber of the root canal is dry, but the canal itself is wet with hypochlorite uh, or any other solution. So in order to get the good reading, you want to have a dry chamber. However, as we know, during instrumentation, you don't want to have consistently a dry chamber because that's not good. You need to have fluid all the way filled to the brim of the canal so that your debris can be in suspension rather than potentially settle and precipitate down the canal. So that's the main reason why I don't keep this connected to the handpiece for the entire length of the procedure. I only strategically connect the apex locator to the handpiece towards the apical third of the root during measurement, then I capture the length, and then I make note of that analog length, and I disconnect the handpiece, and I proceed to do the rest of the instrumentation without the apex locator connected to the handpiece. One thing you can do if you want to be sure, at the end of the procedure, you can come back and reconnect it right before the fill, and measure with maybe a little bit of a larger file this time, maybe a size uh, 1504 or a 2004 to measure the length. And then, the, by the way, the handpiece uh, stays up for a certain amount of time and then automatically because of the power, and then it goes into sleep and then after a certain amount of time. All right, so we looked at the auto start and stop, and then now we're back into the full thing of the now OTR. So OTR, the direction of the motion, the speed, the amount of torque, um, um, for the OTR and the angle of cutting and the non-cutting angle, the synchronization to the apex locator and what it does at that moment. I always have it on the stop, as I mentioned. Um, and then the last one is automatic start and stop when it's connected to the apex locator so that it knows in there. And then you made a full thing on the menu and that pretty much is on each setting. Now, one other way you can also do the second way of uh, connecting is you uh, the handpiece from the off, by the way, to turn the handpiece off, you can press the power and the select button at the same time and it goes off uh, sooner than it automatically goes off after non-use. But what you can do from the off position, if you press the power and the select button together and hold, it goes into a, another menu and that's the startup menu. And that menu allows you to get the sound, for example, here it says it's high. That's the beep level. You can have the, uh, the beep off, you can have it at low, or you could have it at high. And that's kind of based on your preference as to um, what you want. The next setting is uh, the auto power. So as we noticed, at three minutes, it went off here after the video, so during the video. And the same thing, you can set it up to be four minutes, five minutes, or longer, or even less time. So it goes anywhere up to 15 minutes it could be on before it goes off. This is now set to three minutes. Then we move on by pressing the select button again. And now we have this other setting, which is the um, um, just the color, if you will, positive versus the negative. So we have red with the uh, black background versus uh, black versus a red background. That's again, the sense of selection thing based on what you want. Now this is the setting for right-handed versus left-handed people and the selection, if you're right-handed, you keep it on the right hand, it comes automatically for left-handed people, it would be put on the left hand and now you can see that it's kind of switched around to the mirror image of, of it. I keep it on the right-handed here because I'm right-handed. And the other one is the, um, um, the back color changing so that there is, a, um, um, there is a background color. You can turn that off and it'll stay just kind of a black and white, if you will. And the other way, if you leave it on, you'll have uh, different colors in there. Again, that's another one of those um, um, optional things. Now, um, this is the uh, going back, the number of the SSR stands for the amount of time each um, the, the set button stays on after how long does it revert back to uh, the memories. You can change that to increase it or decrease it. Right now, it's set at 10 seconds, which means that in 10 seconds, it would revert back. If I'm not pressing anything, in 10 seconds, it'll revert back to the memory setting. Now, this other setting here, this is a pretty cool uh, one, settings lock and you can turn that on or off. When you have it off, then in each memory setting, you can go in and change the memory setting um, the way you want. You can increase or decrease the torque value or do whatever you want to do. When you have it on, the memory setting is locked. So this way you can't accidentally go ahead and have press these buttons and change the settings in each memory setting that can happen. 
so that's actually a very nice change from endosync to endosync plus that allows you to do that um, I when I'm exchanging handpiece with the uh, with the assistant I may be doing that but when I uh, don't I may put it on the lock but if I'm on my own then I will just leave it um, off so that I can change it but if you are happy with the settings on the on the on the handpiece you might as well just put it on the lock so you don't accidentally change things because there's so many different things that can be changed uh, with the OTR the angles and everything that you don't want to have to accidentally change that so that's it and now we made a full circle on the startup menu as well and uh, that's that's it so this is the whole thing on the inside of the handpiece um, things that you need to know and now it's ready to go and to operate as I mentioned um, cab um, you can autoclave this unit, and this the rest of this has to be maintained. Obviously, uh, some uh, endosync oil will go in here, and this has to be wiped with alcohol and kept clean. And uh, that's pretty much it. I think that's the gist of it. Uh, I'll probably show you some of the videos to uh, demonstrate the technique of how this is uh, used. And, um, the measuring of the working length, how I do it myself, and uh, you can uh, probably share your ideas in the bottom as to how you fine tune and use this handpiece so you can share uh, the settings and whatever you like uh, with the audience. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the EndoSync and Plus and its uh, functionality, all the things that it can do. And uh, I just want to show you the menus in this video and what it can do in order to change the forward OTR, reverse OTR, the angle of OTR, the automatic start and stop, the, the sync settings, and uh, a whole bunch of different functionality that you saw that the handpiece has. If you have any questions, jot them down below. I'll be more than happy to answer them. And if you have your own ideas and techniques or specific settings that work out best for you using the Sandosync Plus, please share with the audience by commenting below. I'd love to hear back from you guys. And uh, looking forward to see you in the next video. And until then, for people then know, I'm Ali Nese, and let's save some tea.